For decades, the possibility of life on other planets has been reserved for science fiction. Until now, for the first time, astronomers have discovered a planet with the potential to sustain life. But who is behind the discovery? Chances are you may have taken one of his astronomy classes, or perhaps seen him in the halls of the Interdisciplinary Sciences Building on campus. The team of astronomers responsible for the discovery was led by Stephen Vogt, a professor and astronomer here at UC Santa Cruz. Vogt met up with us to provide more insight on the breakthrough. One where we have a planet uh, that is only a little bit bigger than the Earth, about three times as massive as the Earth and only about 20 or 50 percent bigger in diameter that uh, is in what we call a habitable zone, where water can exist in liquid form. And that's important, we think, for, for being able to have life as we know it exists. You have to have a surface, you have to have an atmosphere that holds the water onto the surface some pressure, and you have to have the right temperature. And this is right at, at that right place where water is right in the middle of, of the habitable zone. The planet is called Gliese 581g and can be found about 20 light years away from Earth in the constellation Libra. Its level of gravity is remarkably similar to that of Earth's, and its planetary system also holds similar, hosting six planets, the highest number in any system but our own. Due to its favorable temperature, it has been dubbed the Goldilocks planet, not too hot and not too cold. It, it's locked in rotation to the star, so it keeps the same face pointing at the star all the time, unlike the Earth. The Earth spins every day on its axis, so you have day and night. Uh, this one doesn't. So there is no day or night cycle on this on this planet, and that means that it has a, a day side and a, and a night side that are eternal. So uh, the, the day side is the warmest part and the night side is the coldest part. Temperatures on the hottest part, uh, which is almost underneath the star on the hot side, the day side, would be something like 160 Fahrenheit, give or take. On the coldest side, the, the perpetual night side, temperatures would get down to maybe minus 20 or minus 30 Fahrenheit. The place where you would want to live if you were a human being would be on what's called the terminator, which is the line between light and dark, within about 20 or 30 degrees of longitude of that. And there, temperatures would be very pleasant. You'd get anywhere from, you know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit up to maybe 100. So it'd be the kind of temperatures that we're used to, to having in, uh, in our normal life around here. Vogt went on to say that with these favorable characteristics, the prospect of life existing on this planet is high. It has the right conditions and in some ways is even more stable for life than Earth. I, I'm very optimistic that all the conditions for life to exist will probably be there. I mean, we have the right temperature. It has some advantages actually over the Earth. There's a little more mass and that's a good thing because that means its likelihood of holding its atmosphere is much better than what happened on the Earth. And it also would have more efficient plate tectonics, which means that the crustal, the outer surface crustal zone, would be able to communicate with the inner magma zones and produce what's called a carbonate silicate cycle. It would cleanse the atmosphere from buildup of carbon dioxide and such. It's an important component, we think, of habitability. And this, this planet would have a more efficient tectonic cycle, we think. Um, so all those things point in that, in that direction that it would probably be a, a, a very pleasant place, actually, for life to exist. When Vogt set out to find habitable planets, he was aware that it would be a difficult task that would take a very long time, which is why it came as a surprise when he and his team were able to discover this one in only 11 years. Uh, what I infer from it, um, personally, is it's surprising that this happened so quickly around a star that is so nearby. I wouldn't have expected it. The incompleteness uh, factors of our surveys uh, indicate that we shouldn't have found something this soon. The fact that we have indicates one of two things. Either we're just incredibly lucky, this was just serendipity, dumb luck, and we won't find another one again for a long time, or there's a lot of them out there. And my own experience, personally, is that uh, luck rarely ever visits you in this kind of thing. And what it's telling us is that there's a lot of these out there, and we'll start finding a lot more. So what does this discovery mean for us and our understanding of life on other planets? Vote explains. Magic. So orbits are very important. So finding something in an orbit that's not too close where all your water will boil off, or not too far where all your water is frozen, 
is a really important thing. And we didn't know how often nature would make such a thing. Well, we found one already. Our own system has several planets in such an orbit. So I think it's telling us that the chances of life being able to take hold elsewhere in the universe is very high. In fact, this discovery is saying that probably 10 to 20 percent of stars in our own galaxy have these kinds of planets. So 10 percent times 200 billion stars is 20 billion places that are where you can have potentially habitable conditions. And that, I think that tells us that our Earth, as special as it may be to us, since it's so well tuned to us, or actually we're so well tuned to it, is not that special of a place. There's probably tens of billions of places very similar to the Earth, maybe even friendlier for life to exist. And that's a pretty staggering thought. With such exciting possibilities, Vote predicts that in a few generations it will be feasible to send a robot craft to take pictures and sample the atmosphere on Gliese 581G. However, with it being 20 light years away, we most likely will not be around to observe the signals it sends back. Although an exciting discovery, there is still much to be confirmed and researched about this Goldilocks planet.